Linboards presents DC Current Loads. Why might you want a DC current load? One of the primary reasons to have a DC load is to check power supply, the voltage drop with current increases. Another reason could be to check battery capacity, either the milliamp hours of a battery or the rated output current. One obvious way to check a power supply or a battery's capacity is to have a fixed resistor. Of course, this is where our old friend Ohm's law comes into play. The voltage is the product of the current times the resistance. Let's take a look at a typical AA battery and see what its ratings are and see what resistance we would need to test that battery. Let's take a look at the specs for a typical battery, the Duracell Quantum Alkaline Battery QU1500. We take a look at the spec sheet, we can see that the nominal voltage is one and a half volts. However, when you get to the current curve, the constant current curve for the battery, you can see that the current level affects the number of hours that the battery will run. I mean, obviously this is true. You run a battery for, at less current, it's gonna run for more and more hours. And if you run it at heavy current, it'll run for less and less time. Uh, what resistor value would you pick for this? Um, pick a middle spot somewhere? Uh, let's pick one just to see what the numbers look like. So if we want to run at one and a half volts, which is the nominal voltage, and 10 milliamps, that's a 150 ohm fixed resistor. The resistor isn't a particularly large resistor either because at 10 milliamps and one and a half volts, that's only 0.015 watts. So those numbers seem pretty achievable, but what is the real problem with using resistors? Well, let's look back at the curve. The curve here is not a straight voltage it has a drop off as the battery life decreases. So the longer you run the voltage, the voltage drops on the battery. Well, Ohm's law is a constant equation. And as the voltage drops, the current drops as well in this case because the resistance is constant. Ideally, you'd have a device that's resistance changes as the voltage changes. This is a constant current load. How about using a variable resistor and adjusting the resistances as the voltage drops? You could do that. You certainly could take a resistor, variable resistor, maybe a 2K in value, and sit and put in that in series with a ammeter and watch the current over, eh, let's see, what is this, about 340, 330 hours or so, and continually tweak it down as the voltage drops, adjust the variable resistor down, and keep track of what the voltages are on a little uh, chart with paper. That would certainly work, and probably it's a cheap way to go. What would you do for power supply load testing? Hmm, interesting question. Hmm, suppose you want to check a typical wall wart. Uh, let's look at the specs and see what you'd have to do to do it with a resistor. A uh, typical set of values is probably 9 volts at 1 amp. The resistor you'd need would be 9 ohms. However, the power is where you run into the problems because you also need a 9 watt resistor to handle that amount of current. And now is where you begin to run into problems. Real world resistor values, nine ohms, nine watts, just uh, are not typical and easy to obtain. They're expensive. Plus that supply that you thought you were gonna test, it doesn't work at nine volts and one amp. Let's take a look at some moderately high-end DC electronic loads. The BK Precision 8500 is an example of such a load. It's a 300 watt load, which is way overkill. We're showing, showing definitely the high end here but it's certainly capable of doing the sort of nine watt testing we want. However, the price is $1,100 retail. Even the used eBay unit is pretty expensive. It clocks in at around $500 on eBay. Here's a less expensive unit on eBay. It's available for US shipping at about $210. I haven't used this one, so I don't know if it's a good one or not. It's certainly possible to spend a whole lot more money on eBay. Here's a uh, DC load for $3,630. It's a nice quality Keithley piece of equipment, but that's a lot of money. And just in case you thought those were expensive, wow, well, it's 5,000 watts and 12,000 watts. So what can we find in the lower end, the maker end, the hobbyist end, or the small commercial end? Here's an inexpensive unit from China. Uh, the price is about uh, 56 bucks. This is one of the lower priced ones. It's a decent looking unit. There's no knob. It looks like you access it through push buttons up and down for different modes and such. The spec shows, and it does show it rated up to 30 volts and 
5 amps, although not at the same time because the total is only 60 watts. I haven't tried one of these so I can't vouch for the quality, but there's some people on the EV blog that liked it. Maybe I'll pick one up and do a review of it when it comes in the mail. Well, I couldn't resist. We'll see how it turns out. A unit that I like myself and have bought one of and tried is the Arachnid Labs Reload 2. The Reload 2 is a nice looking little unit with a pretty decent little heatsink on it. And until recently has been available on Tindy, it looks like they're moving over to CrowdSupply. Hey, maybe I should take a look at CrowdSupply. The card comes partially assembled with surface mount parts soldered down on the card. It doesn't come with an enclosure, but it's a nice little project. The specs are pretty modest in that the part's a 12 watt part. You can throw a fan on it and cool it down a little bit more. It, uh, it works pretty well. I wish I'd built mine though with the pot sticking out the bottom. If you build one of them, think about how you're going to mount it later on. Here's our build of the Reload 2. The Reload 2 is mounted at the top of a standard hobby box. We've mounted in the front two small LED voltmeters to display the voltage and the current. Put binding posts on the side of the box and inside of the box there's some magic. The magic is an op amp that takes the current uh, output monitoring voltage and amplifies it so that the DC ammeter can read accurately. We used our opto small card for this function. Here's the side view of our build. We've also labeled it generously with P-Touch labels all over the place so it'll be easy to determine what it is later. We created our own circuit card based on the Reload 2 basic design, which incorporates the parts that we had hooked up externally as well as allowing for a digital potentiometer to control the current level. We'll do another video showing the operation of the card. If you want more information, you can see our wiki pages for these products and we have YouTube videos on them as well. We have a store in Tindy where we sell all of these cards. Thanks for watching our video and if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.